It's been almost exactly a month since my last software update video. Today I have the new system update 2022.24.5. This includes five new features. In fact, the additional four undocumented changes are pretty cool too. I received the alert of the new update on my phone fairly late at 11 p.m. I'll update it now and see what I get tomorrow. As I usually do, I'll cover the first thing you see when you do the update, a look at the release notes page. First up, we have Tesla profiles. Keep your settings and preferences synchronized across all supported vehicles using your Tesla account, including mirror, seating, and steering wheel adjustments, autopilot, driving, and climate control preferences, navigation, media, and data sharing preferences. You can set up your Tesla profile from the driver profile settings and change your profile picture from the Tesla mobile app. If you pull up the driver profile settings, you will notice that there is a name and email address. This is the default one associated with your Tesla account. If you want to set up the Tesla profile for a new driver, share this vehicle with them from your Tesla mobile app security, and add driver. Their Tesla profile will automatically appear in this vehicle after gaining app access with their Tesla account. In all, this is very useful when selling a Tesla and buying a new one. You can easily transfer all of your settings. In addition, if allowed by the rental company, rental cars could load your Tesla profile too. Overall, a great new evolution of the profile settings. It's not stated, but I noticed that games are also linked to the email address of the Tesla profile. Next up, we have blind spot camera. Adjust the placement of your blind spot camera on your display by dragging the camera feed. The camera feed will appear in the same position when your blinker is active. To enable, tap Controls, Autopilot, Automatic Blind Spot Camera. Turn on the left or right turn signal with the stock. Now just grab the image and you will see two dark rectangles appear. Those are the locations where the camera feed can be moved. Just move your finger to either location and let go. Now it will stay in this position. Notice that it will snap to any of the three predefined locations if it is anywhere near it. Both the left and right blind spot cameras will appear in this same location. One nitpick. I understand Tesla wants to lock in locations for the blind spot camera so they don't interfere with important info. But why not allow the camera to be placed in the upper right or lower right side of the screen? I'm betting this will be in a future update. Next up we have Disable Sentry Sounds. To prevent disturbing neighbors, you can now disable the sounds made by Sentry Mode. Mobile app notifications will still be delivered. To enable this setting, on the touch string, tap controls, safety, sentry mode, and disable sentry sounds. Pressing the information button mentions, by disabling sounds, sentry mode will no longer honk or generate a loud, unexpected sound when a significant threat is detected. For example, at my office, a coworker has a Dodge Charger with Scat Pack that will make the alarm go off if it's within 20 feet of my car. Press the button to enable this feature. Next, we have Driver Profiles. Any navigation recents or favorites will now be saved to the active driver profile. In addition to the creation of the Tesla profiles and the individualization of the regular profiles, we see some more improvements. 
Tying navigation to a particular user is handy and removes recents and favorites that do not apply to other users. This is very useful if you have multiple people driving the same car. By the way, you can delete favorites by swiping on the name. You can also do this by bringing up the location and untapping the star to uncheck it. Next we have traffic along route. Any slow traffic conditions along your navigation route are now shown prominently as part of the route line on the map. Note this feature requires premium connectivity, which is included on my 2018 Model 3 and optional on later Model 3 and Ys. Honestly, looking at the map and zooming around, I really don't see a big difference with this change. The main routes are blue lines, which are easy to see, but the yellow and red lines indicating traffic are still very thin and not visible at all unless you zoom in on the map. So right now, I'm not very impressed with this one. Now we have the first of our undocumented changes. GPS directions. When the vehicle's navigation is active and the maps are covered with another application, the next step in the directions will now be shown at the top left corner of the screen instead of the bottom left corner. I appreciate this update. The end of 2021 had a big update which moved the directions from the top of the screen to the bottom. To me, that's harder to see. This update moves them back to where they were originally. Also, if you have the turn signal on, the navigation directions will also move to the left side of the screen. Next up, we have tire pressure, which is also undocumented. Since tire pressure data is only sent while wheels are in motion, the service section under controls will now display the last known tire pressure for each wheel. At the top of the screen, the recommended cold tire pressure will also be displayed for the front and rear wheels. This is useful for my annual inspections or if you get your tires rotated at a shop. It's nice to see the actual numbers even if they are from the previous time you drove the car. It may remind you to inflate them or notice that they are not consistent, for example. Having the inflation recommendation right above it is also a good idea. Next up is turn signals, also undocumented. In order to create additional room for the blind spot camera, the vehicle's turn signals have moved up to the top of the screen. They're now located above the regeneration acceleration line and will appear between the gear indicator and the battery icon. I'll zoom into this area, so now you can see that the left and right turn signal indicators are at the top of the screen. Last but not least is Uninstall Games, the final undocumented feature. You can now uninstall individual games, freeing up space on the vehicle's internal drive. In addition to uninstalling the games, you can also view the size of each game and which drive they're installed on. The Battle of Polytopia is listed at 73.9 megabytes. Next is Sonic, which surprisingly cannot be deleted. Apparently not all games can be deleted. I'll go through the whole list and show you. Games that can be uninstalled obviously have an uninstall button and list the game size. Sudoku can be deleted and it's listed at 86.8 .8 megabytes. Skyforce Reloaded is listed at 280.2 .2 megabytes and can be uninstalled. Solitaire is 53.3 megabytes and also can be uninstalled. CatQuest is 103.9 megabytes and also can be uninstalled. Fallout Shelter is 436.1 megabytes and can be uninstalled. Next we have Stardew Valley, it's 1.1 gigabytes and it can be uninstalled. 
Backgammon doesn't give a listing for size and can't be uninstalled. Cuphead is also 1.1 gigabytes and can be uninstalled. Beach Buggy Racing 2 is 122.6 megabytes and can be uninstalled. Chess doesn't give a size and can't be deleted. 2048 also doesn't give a size and can't be deleted. None of the original Atari games can be deleted. I'm not sure why some games can be deleted and others not. The two biggest games are Stardew Valley and Cuphead at 1.1 gigabytes each. Most of the other games are fairly small, 50 to 300 megabytes each. By the way, adding up all the deletable games is 3.36 gigabytes. So even with the non-deletable games, there's probably less than 5 gigabytes used for games in total. I'm not sure why the notes mention which drive the games are installed on. It's not indicated anywhere on the screen. Let me try to uninstall one game. I'll pick Cat Quest. I've never even played this one. Press uninstall. And then it comes up with a prompt to make sure you want to do so. Press OK to uninstall and it seems to delete it almost instantly. Now that you see it shows install on the left side, if you want to put it back on, just press install. It took a few minutes to do this. Then it looks just like before. It shows the size of the game along with the button to uninstall on the right side. So we have seen that the ability to uninstall the game does not actually delete the entry from the screen. It doesn't change the presentation of the game icons in the menu. This gives me the suspicion that either some larger games are coming and need the space, or the system itself is close to running out of space for new games. So in conclusion, not a bad update. The fact that some of the items correct faults from previous updates should not be surprising. A lot of people have had issues with the end of 2021 update. The new amounts of customization as seen in having Tesla profiles that can be uploaded to new cars is a very welcome feature. The ability to move the blind spot camera is also really handy. Tire pressure screen having blank values when you need the info was a frustrating thing that has been fixed. The option to uninstall games may give us a clue that we are reaching the storage limits of the car's entertainment system. Well, that wraps up this episode of System Update 2022.24.5. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.